Hi everyone and welcome back to Sit In It For A Bit on a Sunday uh, with Arne and Carlos and we are as always your hosts. Arne and Carlos. <laughs> and we are back here with another podcast. Nowadays we do them every 14 days yep. and we are very, very happy to be here from our home in Norway. Now some people, if you're stumbling in all of a sudden into this podcast and you're thinking it's a knitting podcast with a lot of knitting. There might be some knitting, there might but be. we do talk about a lot of other things. And the name of the podcast is Sit In It For A Bit, because usually our viewers who have been with us since the pandemic, yeah. they sit and knit for a bit while we talk and recap <laughs> well, our life here in Norway. <laughs> and as designers, we are knitting designers. We do work with knitwear, we design knitwear and do a lot of things. Uh, but we do have other interests as well. So today we have a long... List, um, of, list things. of things that so we want to get through. If you don't know us, you will find out we have a lot of interests. Mm -hmm. And we are actually back from yet another cruise. The first and one in 2024. Yeah, that was the first one and it was called the North Cape Express. Express. And, and it was a little bit different than we thought because well, yeah, the it, weather. Yeah, the weather was actually spectacular. But not before we went. No. So. <laughs> so before we went on the cruise, there was a huge storm in northern Norway. And it lasted for about a week. I think it did, yeah. And it meant that the guests that were on Hutterutten's ship, uh, they had to uh, abandon the ship in Tromsø. Yeah, because of the weather. Yeah. And then uh, the ship couldn't sail down to back to Oslo because the weather was so bad. Mm. Uh, and then by the time we were supposed to board, the ship ended up in the... Trondheim. No, first in Tromsø. Yeah, I think but it was in Trom Tromsø yeah, for a few days and then finally it managed to come down yeah. to Trondheim. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. It was in Tromsø for, for many days. And then by the time we boarded the ship, it was in Trondheim. Yeah. And we boarded there. And uh, the thing is, um, there was no time to get the ship all the way down to Oslo where we were supposed to board. So Hutteruten, they chartered a plane and they, had, uh, they flew with the guests by chartered plane to... Um, to uh, Trondheim. Trondheim. And Trondheim. we spend, uh, we spend uh, a nice time there as well, yeah. which was a good added bonus yeah. and surprise. We were looking forward to taking that tour around the south uh, to Kristiansand and up again because we have never done that before. But they actually we got a whole day in Trondheim, which is not bad. No, no, no. And the next day we sailed down to Aldersund, which is yeah. also good. So I think we got... A really good start yeah. anyhow. All in all, it was really nice. And yeah. we spent uh, the, all the time. We were going to spend 13 days on the ship and we did. So it wasn't like we lost days. Uh, we just boarded from a different port. And it makes sense because if you think about it, Norway's coastline is actually very big or mm -hmm. long. It's at large, actually. Yeah. It's, uh, believe it or not, it's the second largest coastline in the world after Canada. Right now I can't remember. Was it 109? No. It was very long. No, I don't remember. 125,000 or something. Something. It's very long. Kilometers. It's In, very including long. Including the islands, it said. Yeah, but, you, but then you include all the islands, you include all the fjords, right? Yeah. And you keep adding on and then it just becomes this very long coastline. But yeah, it would take from Tromsø to Oslo, it takes probably, what, three, four days? Yeah, probably. And yeah. it wouldn't have been able, you know, it would have, it would have not been... Um, in any way sustainable to get the ship back instead of just boarding it from another place. Mm. But yeah, it is a very long coastline and usually when we do the coastal express, uh, north to south, uh, most of the time we're actually sailing uh, where we can see land on both sides. Mm. Uh, and only a few occasions we are out into the open sea. Yeah. It's usually uh, when we get to the North Cape. After the North Cape there is a, a stretch where we are out in the open sea when Arne tends to That's take That's when I his, have to go to bed. Or take your pills. Or take yeah. my pills. So yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it was a really nice cruise. Yeah. Uh, we had a, uh, actually a very nice group of people. Yeah. Everybody uh -huh. seemed to get along very well. Yeah. So that's always that's nice. That's always nice. We, not were, that we don't have that problem normally either, but no, it no, was not at all. nice. Yeah. And then yeah. we were super busy with all our activities that yeah. we were doing. Um, and it's a little bit of a different concept. The North Cape Express is not the regular route, the coastal route. Um, it is you, uh, um, kind of like another concept where the ship stops um, in fewer ports and stay longer. Mm. Yeah. It's still considered a ferry, not a cruise ship. I mean, that's what a lot of people don't understand um, about Norway and uh, the coastal express and the coast. Um, but uh, it's not really a cruise. 
but we can't call it um, a knitting ferry, can we? No. <laughs> Although it is, it is more of a ferry um, than a cruise because the, the ships have to be very small. Uh, the coastal route, which we're going on in, in two weeks' time, uh, or one week time, by the way, it's uh, one week, yeah. The coastal route actually <laughs> stops in uh, 34 ports. Mm. And in order to be able to do that, um, the ships have to be quite small, because otherwise, because the ports are very small. Mm. Um, and uh, some cities, of course, um, are part of the, of the route, but mainly little ports, so the ships have to be small. And then they deliver supplies and, and carry people. So yeah. the little ports are usually in very isolated places. And so if you need to get to the city, hmm. uh, a northern city in Norway, you take the Hurtudutten yeah. and then you, you go from a tiny place to, to a larger city. But this so, one was also different because it, we sailed more during the evenings and the night time. Yeah. So we had so much more time in the different places. Mm -hmm. So actually we didn't finish a lot of projects this time because we were on so many excursions. Yeah. So we brought a lot of stuff, but... We had so much time doing excursions. Yes, exactly. Nice. We actually, we saw a lot of things we've never seen. It before. is really nice, but I like the Coastal Express in a way a little bit better because uh, yeah, you on get the, a lot of time. Yeah, on the Coastal Express, you spend a lot of time on the ship, yeah. you know, enjoying the view daytime and nighttime. Um, and it's different. Um, although the Svalbard Express that we're going to do in August, that's great because you get to go to Svalbard. Hmm. And you get to spend a lot of time on the ship daytime yeah. as well. But yeah, they're different, um, but very nice. Both yeah. concepts are very nice. And um, so we did the North Cape Express. Um, we were very lucky with the weather. Yeah. It was incredibly beautiful, very sunny. And we had Northern Light. Three, we had was it three nights? Three nights of Northern, northern Light. So check the check. list. <laughs> Knitting under the Northern Lights. Yeah, done. Done that. Um, and, um, and it was great. Yeah. Uh, actually, the weather was really nice, but it was a lot of snow. Um, and that's actually quite unusual. Um, people really think that Norway is this country with eternal winter and lots of snow. <laughs> and we live in the mountains in the south where we do have a lot of snow. And reindeer and, in the streets. Yeah, that's what people think. There's reindeer in the streets and <laughs> polar bears and in, all in that. Terms, maybe sometimes. Yeah, but, but not really. That's a stuffed one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, we live, I mean, if the equivalent of where we live, if we were in, in Europe, I mean, in continental Europe, it would be maybe Verbier in uh, Switzerland or I something know. like that. Uh, in America, it would be Vail, probably, or Aspen. That's kind of the place we live in. Or we live, yeah. With a lot of snow, mm. lots and lots of snow, inland mountains. But along the coast, because of the Gulf Stream, they're not really used to the quantities of snow that we have here. And we noticed that in Lofoten, mm. because in Lofoten we organized an excursion to um, a yarn mill. Um, and to get there usually would have taken us an hour. Yeah. Uh, but this time it took an hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, what did we see? I mean, Lofoten <laughs> Islands are stunning. Yeah. And, under snow or with snow above it, even more beautiful. But Arne, what was it we saw a lot of? Yeah, lot, lot, like cars who went off the road yeah. everywhere. I, I think I counted like six or seven. Or more. Or maybe more. more, more. more, more. So, you know, it's kind of hard to see where the roads are when there's so much <laughs> snow. And another <laughs> funny thing was when we left Svolver. I've never seen so much snow in Svolver. Yeah. So the people were digging the cars out yeah, because yeah, they yeah. were it's... totally covered with We can snow. see this here. And in this part of Norway, people don't drive off the road because they're used to this. Yeah, they're used to the no. snow. Sometimes and we've got no. these indicators yeah. um, all, over, all over where we live <laughs> uh, along the roads. There's these sticks that stick yeah. out. So you can see... The roads, but apparently Lofoten. We asked the bus driver. He said that they do get snow like that, but it's not every year, um, and we've never seen it before. Usually, when we go to Lofoten, there's just a sprinkle of snow, yeah. and um, not much. This time it was a lot. This time it was a lot. Tromsø. <laughs> when we arrived in Tromsø, which is the northernmost uh, large city in the world, um, it was very mild. It was hmm. probably some, yeah, I don't know. Four or five plus degrees, in, which is 35 yeah. Fahrenheit. Which, and then down here, it could be minus 10. So, yeah. so. And also, it was in Honningsvog, way up north, where we went to North Cape. Oh, yeah, that was also... They were, like, blocked from the rest of the world because mm. there were avalanches yeah. just weeks or days before we came. And we've never so. seen that either. No. So, uh, 
Go figure. Uh, it's nice though. <laughs> so it was nice, but then we had some drama. Mom. Yeah. So yeah, we that had a little was, bit of a drama. Uh, we Arne, had some drama. We Arne had... got the stomach flu towards the end of the trip. Yeah, and that's not nice when you're in a ship getting no. the stomach flu because what you, they do with you, they actually isolate you for 48 hours. And your room partner, and <laughs> who did not get the flu. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, not what we ex expected. No, except. it was a weird. <laughs> it was a weird end to the trip because. Yeah. So we had to leave. One day earlier. No, so the no. thing is, the thing What's is, the Arne, Arne got the stomach flu on the night of Valentine's Day, so the 14th. Very nice Valentine. At the final, and then you were fine on the 15th. Yeah. So there was no, when you woke up in the morning on the 15th, you were fine. But on the 14th, he in the evening, he had the stomach flu. And the last symptoms you had of, of you know, going to the bathroom and throwing up were around midnight-ish or one o'clock-ish or something. So then it meant that we had to go into isolation for 48 hours uh, and then counting 48 hours, we were going to be in on the 17th of February. When we left the ship? No, uh, at around one o'clock at night. Yeah. And then we were going to leave the ship anyway at seven, seven in, the in the morning to catch an early flight. Mm. And this is because the regulations on board are very strict. So, you know, but we were allowed to get off after 24 hours. Actually, I, you could leave the ship. Yeah, if we could you have left to, even but before if that. If you stay on the ship, you have to be away from other people for a while. Yeah, for 48 so hours. If it happened earlier, it would be fine. And you know. Yeah, you know, because then we would have been may, able to make it yeah. to the farewell dinner. Mm -hmm. But counting back and or, or forward and realizing that we're going to stay isolated in the cabin until um, the day we leave, we decided to just rebook our flights. <laughs> yeah get off the ship and go home from Molde, which is what we did. So we didn't do the farewell dinner, unfortunately. So, um, and we're very sad about that. I mean, um, we are. But, you know, these things happen sometimes. Yeah. Um, Arne was very unlucky, and I was very unlucky that I was his room partner, because then I had to pay as well. <laughs> and we say, like, normally, like, we're lucky because we bring a lot of knitting and crocheting, and there's always books and stuff. Mm. But... I was kind of tired the next morning because of all of course, the things yeah. that are happening. So I didn't do much, and yeah. but you did a lot of work. I did, but I just want to mention one thing though before we go into that. Um, in the twelve, I think we've been on this ship uh, twelve times, yeah. and in the twelve times we've been on this ship, this is the first time um, ever. On a, ever that we've experienced this uh, kind of issue. Um, so usually the ships have very good uh, procedures hmm. um, and people do, you know, people are told to wash their hands, which they do and, and things work really, really well. This was uh, very unlucky, um, uh, but it's not something that happens uh, no, very often. We've never, had it. we've never had this happen in the 12 times. I mean, the first time we went on Hutu was in 2007. Hmm. And up until now, um, never, it's the first ever time before. For everything. And I googled it as well, and I found two articles in the media: one from 2007 and one from 2010, where the whole ship was kind of quarantined because of the stomach flu. So um, <laughs> not very often, no. um, but you know, it does happen sometimes. And if you're unlucky, you get it. And if you're very lucky, you don't get it. Most of our group didn't get it, no. so they were okay. Some of them did. And uh, that's life. But yeah, the good thing about it was I wasn't doing very well with my knitting. Um, I was supposed to knit all the Easter, Easter ornaments. How many did you do? Well, I wasn't very good um, <laughs> at doing it with all the people around me. Oh, you can't. Uh, because I'm not a big multitasker. So I ended up knitting one. Uh, but then uh, sitting in our cabin uh, where we were isolated for 24 hours. Um, yeah, boy. <laughs> but you boy, made, did I knit. Actually, you did another one also, but which we changed. Yeah, so... So you finished one first? So I did this one. This is very cute. It's like a... Yeah. But, it's like a bunny on a... But it was in gray and pink. pink. And it didn't work very well, so we changed it. So we changed it into blue and white with a heart on the stomach. Um, I did this one. This one was fun. The little chicks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this one I started on the ship and I finished it. And, and I, it took me like days to get halfway. And then... So I, I, I think that this much took me three days yeah. and then this much took me an hour of si you know in silence focusing on this <laughs> you're really not good at, in multitasking no but. I'm not very good but but to my defense so when we were on the coastal express last year spending more time on the ship hmm. I was able to knit um, a whole hat yeah uh, and it you know 
uh, I had plenty of time. But this time uh, we were out during uh, the day, du doing all of our excursions. And I was only knitting for a couple of hours in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. So and that's the also... that's the difference. And then at night, when it gets dark, yeah. um, I have problems seeing. And the light was not so good up in the lounge where yeah. we were knitting. So the next time I'm going to bring that lamp. Well, I refuse because it ages me. It makes me look old. I don't want to wear a lamp around my neck or. We have those head. lamps from the when we walked Inca Trail. Yeah, you yeah. can have that. But then you blind people. Exactly. Yeah. No, and there no. are other and they make you look old. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> which, which I'm, a... I'm sure I'm offending a lot of people here who, who wear the lights. No, no, no. It's, I'm just kidding. It's, it's a well, joke. I've used, but I have used it. Yeah, but I have. But then the I electricity went out, and I didn't understand how to put in a battery. Oh, yeah, but yeah. now on the last cruise, I learned they're not on battery. You have to use the charger for the phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. And now I don't know where I put it, so I have mm. to look for it. Yeah, and that brings us to our next point: the technology. Uh, versus the age because um, I was joking about the lights aging you but we are aging we are getting older and um, <laughs> now we're going on the Havila ships um, yeah. Oh. so yeah what we do is we so there's two two lines that run the coastal route okay so the the coastal route is actually governmental uh, the government subsidizes these two these two lines um, and what they do is they connect smaller towns with bigger cities that's pretty much the thing remember we have the second largest coastline in the world. And we need small, <laughs> small ships that can sail into all these tiny little cute ports, okay? So um, nowadays, uh, so for 125 years, Hutterutten was on, on their own, uh, kind of had monopoly. But before the pandemic, it was decided that Havila, which is a Norwegian-owned company, uh, was also going to... Um, to do the route. So nowadays they share them. Mm. Uh, five, five departures a week is Hutterutten and two departures is Havila. And we kind of make it a point to, to use both because both are really good yeah. and both are different as well. Now the Havila ships are interesting because they're brand new. Um, they're <laughs> state of the art and they, and they run on battery power uh, for four hours at a time. So they get charged. The batteries are charged when they're in the big cities. And then when they uh, go into the vulnerable fjords, they can sail yeah. on, on battery power. So you can already there imagine how amazing the technology it's very is. very modern. Yeah. So how modern is it, Arne? <laughs> it's very so modern that I never learned how to put on the lights. No, we do. Like properly. We like, do, but it takes do you... 10 days. Yeah, but like, I can't remember. No, me I don't neither. think I remember if I see it either. So last time we were on a Havila ship was in March 2023. <laughs> So it's a year ago. Since then, all our cruises have been on Hutterutten. We did the, the Svalbard Express. We did the one that we called Knitting on Top of the World. And we've just done the North Cape Express. So we did one in August, one in September, and one now. And now we're going back to Havila. And it means that we have to learn one more time how to turn on the lights and how to dim the lights yeah. and how not to feel like a vampire every morning when Arne turns on the lights. And I get... All that bright find, light uh, in my face. The, I always find it's horrible. The, the big one, the one for, yeah. that lights the whole room. Yeah. <laughs> but there's like the, the, the night, the lamps next to the bed. I, I did never understand. I know, I know. So but last time, last time we learned, it took us 10 days. This time, <laughs> I th you know, because we have a good relationship with uh, both ships. We should get the people. And we know the, the people. We know the people uh, who work come there. Come and show us how we do it. I'm going to ask them, come, come to our cabin and show us how to operate these but we're lights. we're not the only one. Some of the people in our crew, crew cruise, yeah. they also struggle. So, and we couldn't explain because we had no... <clears throat> no, these lamps on, and, and the switches are... They're too modern. I mean, yeah. they're too modern for people to even understand them. Um, so. so, yeah. But we're looking forward. Uh, we are looking forward to boarding Havila again. It's been a while. And it's been a while since we did the coastal route because mm. the three knitting cruises that we've done have not been on the route. And now we're going back to our 34 ports, which we love so much. Yeah. And, uh, nice. and, and actually, this one is new because it's got... Um, it's got knitting and quilting, mainly quilting, I think, yeah, and, and, I, and knitting. So it'll be exciting. I started to prepare the things for the quilting cruise. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm always so optimistic about things we should do. And I think maybe we are prepared more than yeah, we can. Yeah, and you always bring too much stuff that yeah, we but, need to take back. But I was uh, going through the stuff, the quilting stuff, and I found... Can I show it now? Sure. These things? Because 
I have to show you this because this is kind of funny. First, this is the project that, that we're going to bring and work on. Mm -hmm. You can open those. That's oh. the, the Christmas. Are we doing these as well? Yeah, and we're going to work on the same, I think. The Christmas flowers. Yeah, Sorry. so that's mostly based on fabrics from thrift stores. Actually, most of the quilts are based on And that. it's going to be a lovely ah. tablecloth or something. Or something, I don't know. And this Very one, pretty. This is more like a floral one. So we're not bringing all these. That's my shirt. I know. It shrank. It was my favorite, but now... And look at this. I think this came out nice. Let me see. That's the fabric. Oh, yeah. Made. That's from our fabric that we designed. Yeah. And this one, this is like old tablecloth or something. Let me see this one. Uh, yeah, this is very nice. And this one with the cross stitches, this you can find in every thrift stop stores in Norway. These are mass produced somewhere. In China, probably. Yeah, but they look handmade. And these are the... Um, Those are definitely Chinese. Yeah, these we found in... Hexam. Hexam, these are the... When we went with Kate. Yeah, what do you call that again in English? The lubbetörkla. Oh, the handkerchiefs. Handkerchief. Yeah. And this one here in the center is a Liberty fabric. I recognize it as yeah. a Liberty fabric. And this is also handkerchiefs. And these are so thin, so it's double yeah. fabric. Handkerchief. Yeah, so this is like the things. Yeah, this, so is, uh, this is our fabric design. So these are from our designs as well. Yeah, They're really cool. This also. Let's see. Yeah, these are our fabric designs. But then, I was looking through the stuff and remember we, we started to do, I think we showed this on YouTube once, didn't we? The, the Christmas one, this one. Oh yeah. Because this is when we put... And then you're gonna, you're gonna make, uh, I don't think we've shown that yet. Oh, maybe not. Because we take, we make those hexagons in thin paper and we glue it on another paper and then we find the shape. So then we can cut out like this. So you cut out different mm. embroideries from old stuff, and then you, then we put this, sew this back, so it makes a hexagon. Mm. I like this a lot. Hmm? I like this a lot. I like this. All the pattern. Yeah. <laughs> so this. And I is, like how um, you. I like how you put it together. Yeah. It's very nice. But I've been thinking like this, Carlos. This we won't bring mm. because I had an idea. Yeah, but you bring too much and we end, up, we end up traveling with like four suitcases, which is a hassle. But yeah, so Arne is going to try to scale down his uh, ambition because you'd never finish all the uh, things no, you bring. It's so nice. There's a lot of nice Christmas embroideries, but it's so white. So mm. what I was thinking is what if we put all these together later and make a whiter quilt with only Christmas decorations, but then we can put flisseline on the back and we can do cross stitches. Mm. Is that what they call interfacing? Uh, probably. Yeah, I think. So we can do cross stitches on top with small embroideries. Mm. So we so we make them float together mm. in a better way. So we're going cray cray again. We're going cray cray on this one. <laughs> yeah, why not? But this is not going on the cruise. This is no, that's what I mean. Time. It's you, you bring too much and yeah. then you don't use it, because which is a little bit of a hassle because I mean, why, why schlep it all the way home from home and yeah. then not use it? You know what I mean? I think I, I'm very optimistic. I think yeah. I have so much time. I, I think I'm going to do so much. Yeah. But then you know, there's like thrift stores in every city. There are. So I'm yeah. probably come and now, more. And now that we're going on the coastal route, we're more in our element because we know, we know everything, everything by memory, right? We know where the stores are. We know where we're getting off. We know when we're not getting off. We can plan our day accordingly, you know, what projects yeah. we want to do. And Arne has announced to me that he's on a schedule starting um, March 5. He will be on his schedule. He's got a morning schedule for projects. Oh, yeah. Right? Think, uh, and then well, you have an afternoon schedule. I think I'm going to split the day in three. Yeah. So, Let's see how long that lasts. But so from the morning until lunch, I, for example, I can do quilting or doll clothes because then the light is better. Mm -hmm. And then from after di lunch to dinner, I can do maybe what we're there for. Maybe yeah. just quilting. And in the evening, I can do some easy knitting. Yeah, for example, or crocheting. So if you're doing um, if you're doing something that you're not supposed to be, 
because of your schedule. If you change your schedule, you'll let me know, right? Yeah. No, so, but I think like so that I can plan as well <laughs> my own schedule. But you know, we have some. You you can work on this. I will. We I will have so much of this. I will definitely work on this. Mm -hmm. But I have another idea. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting. You see all these things. We can actually put embroidery, but we also have this little punch machine. Oh yeah, that's very cute. So if you take smaller motifs, you can actually put those on top again and do applique. <laughs> yeah. Should Lots I bring ideas. should I bring this to the cruise? Yeah. And you bring can it. do it. Bring it. Bring whatever <laughs> no. bring whatever you want. I'm, I mean I'm not gonna No, I'm preparing I'm gonna uh, complain. hexagons with flowers and Christmas. But I can tell you a lot of a lot of yarn was transported to our cruise on the North Cape Express. And all that yarn got transported back to yeah. home again. Although you did finish some things, right? I mean, we need to go through them. We can start with the, no. ball, the balls and the eggs because we showed only one. Yeah, we but, finished the balls. But yeah, there's, there's the you eggs, know. The eggs we did when we came these home. These we did when we came home. So these don't count. We're going to take these yeah. out. Because we were thinking maybe this one's people so want eggs as well. Yeah, this one's so cute. Yeah, he's so very cute. Yeah, and I was, I was thinking instead of calling them balls, because, you know, the Christmas balls, the others, why don't we call them bulbs? Bulbs. Bulbs, like, bulbs. you know, the ones bulbs. you plant. No, yeah. bulbs. Or bulbs, yeah, like bulbs. Uh, and tulips and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, in Norwegian it's called lök, which also means onion, because yeah. our language is not as rich as English is. But is, isn't that what they call bubbles, Christmas? Bubbles, yeah, bubbles. but bulbs, B-U-L-B. Bulb. That's another thing. Yeah, bulb, bulb, I think it's spelled. So this is Easter Spring bulbs. Spring bulbs and yeah. Easter eggs. Yeah, so you got a lot of colorful ones uh, that we've done. Roses. Uh, Spring, after all. This one's very nice, all yeah. the colors. That's like this one you did on the ship, I remember that. Yeah, I think we did all of them on the ship, yeah. but not the, the eggs. The eggs came yeah. after we came home. And then some little cockadoodle doos. So we yeah. can say we finished the. Bulbs. And I'm sure that, and this one here, I'm sure that, so the train. That's inspired of this place. Yeah, so people in other countries won't understand this. But in Norway, back in the 50s, when people started celebrating Easter up in the mountains, in their secondary homes, or maybe they went to a hotel or something, they take the train. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the busiest train stations back then for winter sport activities in our area is the train station that today is our home. Yeah, because so, a lot of people came up here for skiing. Yeah, so, so. This, this, and as I mentioned, uh, Verbier or uh, San Moritz or Gestad, uh, those kind of places, or Courchevel in France, those kind of places are similar to our place. That's where we live. We live in yeah. a ski But we don't area. have the ski tracks anymore. Just outside well, not outside our house, but if you go uh, other places, there's plenty. Yeah. And here you can do both cross-country skiing, which is what we used to do. We haven't done it this year. No. It's embarrassing. Um, no, we did during Christmas. Well, that was last year, wasn't it? Well, that was last year. Christmas yeah. was last year. Yeah. So it's very embarrassing. <laughs> but cross-country skiing is what we do. But if you want to go downhill, there's stations here as well, yeah. many of them. Mm. So, uh, yeah. I think sometimes we give a bad impression of Norway because people see our snow and then they think it's like that everywhere. But it's not. Mm. I mean, we promise. And it's if, less cold as people think. No, no, it depends where you are, but that's the same, you know, for everything. And, mm. and as we were saying, if you're on the coast, it doesn't mean it gets colder no. um, with the Gulf Stream. Anyway, yeah, lots of little birds, fun with birds, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, and, uh, and this one we, we redid. And here's a little, I don't know, like a little tulip or something. It could be tulips. a little cute. Small tulips. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> these, these we've released now because... Oh. People may want to do them for Easter, so we have to release them early. So and they're available um, on our web shop if you, wanna, be. if you want to get them there. Um, and yeah, and they're just for fun. I mean, mm. it's, it's a great way to get rid of your stash and uh, to enjoy a couple of hours. So as I said, knit this with a lot of people around you. It takes days, but knit this in peace and quiet in front of the TV. It takes an hour. For me, anyway. <laughs> That's, an hour is good. Yeah. And that, I also finished this, more jackets for the doll. Mm -hmm. This is scrap yarn. We have only one ball of each. 
So I'm just using them instead of having the yarn yeah. lying around. So this is finished. I finished this, I finished. Yeah, but you're knitting the and same the thing over and over again, aren't you? Yeah, because I'm making the same dress and this, this silhouette, but they come out differently. This is almost finished now. Yeah, and I see you have a matching jacket for it as I well. I have, but I have, um, I didn't have, I didn't find enough of these white beads. So we have to look for more okay. if we have it somewhere in the house. And this jacket matches. Yeah. So this one is a shorter model. Mm. This, this one are too long for this dress because yeah. it's so much volume in it now. Mm. But I'm thinking about one thing, Arne. When you do, you know, you want to work on your book mm -hmm. for Japan, for yeah. the Lika doll. In order to do that, you'll have to do 36 different yeah. outfits. I think I have. Or, design, or, 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 or pieces of clothing. Yeah. You can't do the same jacket no, over no, and over again. No, no, not for them, but this is cleaning. Yeah. But I thought you were going to begin with that idea of yours yeah, for the but book. I have already made... How many did I do on the trip to Japan? I you did, did a couple. A coat yeah. and different sweaters and some jackets. I mm -hmm. just had to write down the pattern. Yeah. But uh, I changed the idea a little bit. Actually, not changed totally, but we worked with the, the Japanese yarn, Avril. Yeah. And I also decided to work with... That we should work with... Um, Rowan's fine lace. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice yarn. It's needle 2.5 or something. Mm. If it's 2 for the rib or 2.5 or smaller. Because then there's space for patterns. Yeah. So it's coming. But I think I will wait until we're back from the quilting cruise. Yeah, that's a good idea. I can't focus on so many things at the same time. Yeah, and then you were working on a crochet project as well, right? Yeah, um, this one I think I'm going to bring back. It's still... Grow. It's growing. It is, yes. It's a tote bag with some easy crocheting. Yeah. So this is going on the next one. I like the colors a lot. Yeah, it's a nice color combination. Very nice colors. Yeah, and then back to the doll book. I mean, whenever you start feeling ready, um, let me know yeah. and I'll help you. I'm ready when we come home from the cruise. Yeah, then I'll help you edit and yeah. make sure that you have what you're supposed to have and not more. Yeah, I have, not some, less. I have some ideas for the pictures. Mm -mm, which very I think good. can be cool. So, but I, that's a secret. Of course, it's a secret. <laughs> but yeah, you do need. Uh, you will need some help at some point, and let me know, and I'm ready yeah, to uh, assist. I'm not organized, so you have to organize everything. Yeah, otherwise, Arn ends up doing 36 identical yeah. jackets, and then it's like, no, you can't have 36 jackets in the book. You have to have looks, right? And we have to I know. kind of figure it out. So uh, but that's yeah. different from this. Cleaning yeah, this project. is a cleaning project. Uh, it's so a strange cleaning project. Though. Very strange cleaning. Speaking of cleaning, <laughs> speaking of cleaning, Arne, you've been very good today. Yeah, this morning. Good boy, I, cleaning the toilet. Yeah, that's the first thing I did this morning. I was cleaning the toilet. So it's uh, now it's spick and span. Is that what you call it? Look, it, it has never been so clean. Ever. Yeah. And as he was cleaning it, he was saying, oh my God, it's just as... It's just as uh, hard work as cleaning a regular toilet. But this hasn't been cleaned in years. I know, disgusting. Ugh, ooh, and just the thought of it. <laughs> and also the bathtub is did clean. You, did you clean the tub? Yeah. But this one was loose, so I glued this on. I'm actually fixing stuff. And this one has this, what do you call that? A hose. A hose. A shower hose, right? And it seems like it's going to go in on the side yeah. like this. And then I don't know where it goes. I, I guess you hang it, don't you? I mean, on a hook. I don't know. Yeah, there's like a place for it on top. Yeah, so it goes there. And then... S somehow, some way. I, I wash, this is the, what do you call this one? The sink? The sink? The kitchen sink, right? No, the bathroom sink. Bathroom sink, and there's a towel. This towel is a little bit dirty, but it's the original towel. Because this is, old, this is the old Swedish dollhouse that I bought during Advent. Yep. And there you I'm, go. Fixed it. Oh, I think we should glue this on so yep. it doesn't fall off again. But that's what it should look like. So this is the whole bathroom. That's clean now so I can put it, put things back where it should be. And then I was looking through the drawer in the other dollhouse and I found this carpet. carpet. Look, it. It goes really good with the... Uh, it goes well, yes. In the bathroom. Absolutely. So what I'm doing now, I'm cleaning every room. I'm going through all the stuff for the each, each of the rooms. And I'm gluing stuff that is broken. I know the bed has one leg that is broken. 
And then I just put it back and organize it. Very nice. So I'm cleaning, as always. As always. The shower new, new found, the new... Oh yeah. The new um, dog. So we went shopping in uh, Trondheim, or Trondheim um, depending on how you pronounce it. There's many <laughs> ways to pronounce that city. Uh, yeah, and uh, Arne has fallen in love with a new little friend. And uh, hang on, I'm just gonna... There's always a new friend. Yeah, she's a little bit of a, a, a thing. Um, they call her a pocket doll, <laughs> right? Yeah. Some people call her a flatsy because she's very flat. <laughs> she's very and flat. she folds out like this. Um, and uh, she is incredibly cute. Look at that. And she's got a fun little dress on. Um, and if you turn her to the side, you see, she's completely flat, she's a flatsy. Maybe this one fits her. Oh no, it's too long on the sleeves. Yeah, we can try. But I, I have this Google thing where you take a picture of things and then it pops up what it is or suggestions on what it is. And it came out as a vintage Italian pocket doll. Pocket doll. But it also said flatsy. And flatsy. So this one will now travel with us, I guess. Yeah, it's now easy I'm... to just have her in her pocket. Now I'm losing focus here, but yeah, I you do. You shouldn't do this. Yeah, but I want to style this jacket on her. I just really. Oh yeah, <laughs> no problemo. No, no. I, you know. She need a, She need more like a Barbie. Oh, but this is no, no, no. This is nice, Arna. Yeah, with big cuffs. Oh come on, look at this. She's gorgeous. I mean, don't you just love it? She's so flat and she's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> so now she has this very. This very beautiful uh, jacket on with very voluminous sleeves. Yeah. It could be a Balenciaga from uh, maybe from the 1950s or 60s with some sort of Balenciaga balloon sleeves, and then it's embellished with all these cute little crystals on it. Yeah, she's very fashionable. She's very fashionable. Yeah. And talking about fashion, look what I I have to show you something. Look. Look at. We so, have. Yeah. She can wear. She can wear these as well. I'm making. Look at this one. We got this one from France, the Barbie from the movie, mm -hmm. and we haven't opened it because it's precious. Oh, yeah, Arne doesn't dare to open it. And then um, on our way to the last cruise yeah. in the airport, they had this one. Yeah, our Canadian friends who gave us this told us that. Um, they're quite hard to get now. They're always sold out everywhere. But the airport had plenty of this. Yeah, so the pink cowboy, yeah, cowboy suit. Is, this one is so cute. Yeah. But I, I don't think we should open them for a while. They can just be in the box. Maybe they will be worth... worth uh, how do you say that? Worth? Worth? Worth. Worth a fortune in the future. Yeah, but are you ever going to sell them? Ever? No, but maybe no. someone else will, and then... Oh yeah, but it won't be me, I promise you. I won't sell your Barbies. And we got this magazine time about the Barbie movie from you, Joanne, and I think if we make a box with the precious Barbie stuff, this will be it together. Yeah. But now we have Flatsy. Yeah. So I think she will travel with us now, maybe with the Italian doll. Yeah. I mean, don't you just love her in her coat that I styled for her? She looks very good. <laughs> yeah. She does. Smashing. I love it. I love that look on her. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen them with hair as well, but this yeah. one has just plastic hair. Yeah, and then we kind of, uh, so we did, um, Arne did a, like a search, and he searched for the doll, and he found her on eBay, her twin sister. <laughs> and before we could, uh, yeah, get it ourselves, our friend bought it. <laughs> but we don't need more than no, one. No, we don't need more than one, so. Uh, She's just funny. Yeah. But of course, the Italian don the, the doll, which I make the the dresses and the yeah, jackets for. We need more of her. Yeah, so we're Same taking uh, we're taking ours to the UK. Hint, uh, hint, hint, notch, hint, notch. Hint. So uh, <laughs> just so you know, friend, um, just so you know, ours is coming with us to the UK. So and if maybe you want to bring your, if you want to bring some... yours, we could have a you know we'll have afternoon tea. Yeah, we could do together some clothing, with the, clothes yeah. on the uh, bus. Yeah. And have afternoon tea all yeah. together. Isn't that what you do? Yeah. And then I want to talk about something else because this morning we had the carpenter in the house mm. and he is uh, planning to start to build the new extension next month. Yeah. 
and I found the books. Which is already over budget, but I know it, you won't live once. It will be more. So I found the book. Did you say anything else now? No. Or no? <laughs> this is the inspiration, Il Vittoriale degli Italiani, the house we went to on the Italian tour. And in this room, there's a picture of one of his offices. And that's what Arne wants. So this is my main inspiration. Yeah. That's what he wants. This is what I want. I told him about the paint for the walls because I wanted that kind Oil. of dark, um, dark olive green. I, I, I've kept telling him about that color. I'm, I'm dreaming about that color, but we have nowhere to put it right now. Um, and, uh, and then suddenly he showed me the inspiration yeah. and there is that color. So I think we're in the same... I think uh, we are because we talked about the pale gray green. But that's so, this, so nice. This, this green is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. And then I also put some pictures in, of, for inspiration in the scrapbook mm -hmm. for the office. This is one of our scrapbooks. This is a, made of a catalog on uh, what you call that? Things for the bathroom. Yeah. Like or kitchen sink and stuff. And then we glue on this one. But why did you put mm -hmm. that sink? Do we want that sink? I don't think so. This is the catalog. Oh. This, this is in the catalog. Ah, is oh, so you glue the page. Oh, okay, got it, got it. <laughs> we have the sink. Or do we? Yeah. No. No, but this is, uh, I used the catalog as a scrapbook. Oh, I understand now. And then so I, you're gluing in the catalog, you're using the catalog pages as empty pages. Sorry, now I made you lose what you were looking for. It's all my fault. <laughs> What you were going to show, your other inspiration. You, you thought I had put that picture as an inspiration. I don't know. I don't <laughs> meddle with your private things. It's a diary. It's private. But I found these two pictures. See that little, that little chair next to the window? That is probably more what, what I will more get. More realistic. And this uh, chest of drawer with a lot of fabric on top and stuff. Yeah. I already bought the drawer. I just have to make them yeah. deliver. Yeah. I'm going to go down soon. Yeah, he, he bought a huge piece of furniture that for a, for a room. room that doesn't exist um, <laughs> and that we're going to have to store, you know, where we store everything else that he buys that might come in handy one day. But it's very nice. It has small drawers for sewing things and pencils and stuff. And mm. there's like uh, four drawers under. So mm -hmm. I was thinking one drawer for Norwegian wool, one drawer for crochet yarn, one for Hilda's wool, mm -hmm. one for uh, something kid silk, no, yeah. fe felted tweed maybe. See, now I already cleaned the whole room. You did, yeah, wow. Look how organized I am. So organized as always, yeah. and yeah. L show what I found this morning. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we, l yeah. So uh, what was I gonna talk about? Uh, you kind of <laughs> oh, lost me. Yeah. What yeah. were we talking about again? I'm getting old, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. That's, oh yeah, we were talking about, about the, the furniture extension. and the extension. You think I buy too much furniture? Well, I would appreciate it if you bought the furniture when we have the room so that you can put it in the right room instead of, you know, putting it in uh, together with your easel and all the other things that you bought. Uh, have you seen the ladder he gave me as a gift? What? I leave so many... I, I actually, a ladder? Yeah, you know, like a little ladder for libraries or... You haven't seen it. I told you. This is the first time. It's hear. in the garage. <laughs> it's the first time I hear about this ladder. <laughs> no, it's not. You're probably on your computer because I told you he gave me a ladder. Like yeah. a, oh my god! It's not like a ladder. Ladder is more like a chair with mm. steps. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of. No, it's a gift. Breathe. I didn't pay for it. It doesn't matter. He it's... said, "I said, oh, that's nice," and he said, "Yeah, you can have it." Yeah, but it's not the, it's not about the payment. It's about one more thing <laughs> that you got that you brought here. But you're always talking about in the upstairs in the bookshelves that you should have something to climb on. So, so why is it there? Because it's been used when people were, are painting. I think there's like paint all over it. Maybe it's beautiful. You can look at it. If not, we have to paint it. 
Yeah, okay. But um, it's nice when you have to climb. Even in the kitchen, we have to climb to get up in the highest cupboards. Mm. So yeah, we struggle with this. You know, I, I would love to have that uh, philosophy of, you know, you bring something in and you throw something out. Oh, I did. I did. I was in the garbage place at the same time. And what did you throw out? Things. Yeah, what things? <laughs> be more specific. <laughs> I can't be. I don't remember what I throw in the garbage. Things we yeah, don't use but, anymore. But I mean, it's not the equivalent of a ginormous ladder, is it? It's not enormous. It's very tiny. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's it's what almost, you, Arne, that's what you said about the easel. That it's almost dollhouse size. Yeah, that's what you said about oh, the... Oh, I think you have a delivery coming, Carlos. That's what you said about the easel. I think there's a, the car, there's a car coming okay. with something you order. So when Arne bought an easel, he said it was tiny. It was the smallest thing ever. And then we were going to try to get Eric to drive it here in his car because it was so small. And uh, when we got the measurements, I was... Um, I was shocked and of course, obviously, you, we needed to get it here with a big yeah. truck and because that, it was impossible. Says the guy the who... The tiny little easel. Says the guy who bought three enormous cushions for the sofa in the drawing room. And while he was complaining about how little space it was <laughs> to sit, he ordered one more. Okay. This is... Does this sound familiar? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so I guess... <laughs> and what did you throw away? <laughs> Tell me what you threw. Well, I take this, the other cushions and I put them in the big chest. Okay. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> oh, you're a hoarder. <laughs> I'm a cushion hoarder. <laughs> I'm addicted to cushions, what can I say? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and there's two more cushions coming in. Two? You said one. No, well, oh yeah, okay, that one. And then there's two more that we ordered from uh, the upholster with a with fringe around yeah, it. Why did you do that? Where are they going? <laughs> On the sofa over there. And we have this big bench here in the kitchen now. That... Actually, we, we talk about doing like a, a garage sale in the spring. Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> but we're not selling any cushions. <laughs> <laughs> we are not selling any cushions. They're all mine, okay? Yeah, I know. This is mine, and this is mine, and this is... <laughs> well, we, we need more We're not... cushions. There's one over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I, may, so, I, I, may, I may be... I uh, rest my case. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But I still have to see this gigantic ladder that it's, you're it's talking not about. Gigantic. Oh, it sounds huge. But you haven't seen it, it's so and small. You're in the garage every day when you take the car out and, and you remember, park the car and you don't see it, so it's small. And remember, when you say something's nice and they say you can have it, there's a reason they're giving it away, right? They're no, not being nice. I, I, bought, I bought a very nice chest of drawers. Yeah. So that's why, I, that's <laughs> like when you give, when you buy something in the store and they give you a little chocolate or something. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> or a little key ring. A key ring. Something but you got really, a ladder. You really don't need all those key rings. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to go to the garage and see it. Yeah. How come I haven't seen it there? I parked the you car. You see, it's not that big. That's why you haven't seen it. Oh, either it's not that big or there's a ton of other things in the garage that I see. And therefore, I don't see the, the ladder because there's like <laughs> so many other yeah. things to look at. We've got windows. We've got... Um, <laughs> But the windows were selling in the, in the, in spring. the spring. And what about the table on the front porch? Because you wanted to have a new table. Oh, what do you mean I wanted to have another table? You wanted it too. Yeah, but you said you should sell the other one. It's not gone yet. It's no, I haven't put it up for sale yet. Have you should. I am. Yeah. There's no space in the garage because of my I know. ladder. I know. Let me, let me put the... Tomorrow? <laughs> let me put it on, online tomorrow, tomorrow and hopefully it's sold by the weekend. Yeah. So next time you see Sit and Knit, I will tell you if it's sold or not. Yeah. If I remember. Well, we can put it for very cheap. Yeah. I'm sure somebody will buy it. And then afterwards they'll say, why did I buy it? Why? Why? And then they say, oh, now I understand why it's for sale. Why it was for sale. Well, I think, I think it's... It's a nice table. It's a nice yeah. table. It's yeah. like a leather chest that you open yeah. and you can put stuff in it. So yeah. it's good. I mean, uh, it's good for, you know, surplus pillows when you have so many cushions. 
<laughs> That's actually where you could store your pillows. Not anymore. We had Christmas decorations in there once, but then we had, there were so many books on the top yeah, of the yeah. table, so it was almost impossible to get in there. We didn't bother moving those books around to mm. get in the thing. And also, since it's flat, like it covers a big piece of the floor. Yeah. So with the floor heating, a lot of the heat is in the in the and the, suit, trapped, the trapped trapped in the, in the suitcase. Now we've got it's this like a suitcase. Yeah, now we got this really nice uh, Italian uh, glass table. Um, and it's open, so it's very nice yeah. to put your feet under the table. And, and it's it all glass, and it's kind of like, a, it's curved, so it's shaped like yeah. that. And it's very clean and very simple in its, sh its beautiful shape. It's a design from the 1930s, and yeah. this is a new edition. And it looks like the books and the candle holders are floating. floating. It looks floating. really nice. And we have a similar one. We have a similar one in the dining room yeah. as well. Not as a dining table, but we have a little sofa there. So they're very nice and they kind of look, I don't know, they look, they look very light in a way. It makes the room a little lighter. We've got a lot of heavy Actually, furniture. you can see it, so you have to be careful when you walk in the room because yeah. you can easily kick into the Many table. people have kicked themselves on the glass tables that we have. <laughs> like, whoops, there was a table there. Whoops. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that, that's a very nice thing. And I'm going to put my cushion, my beloved cushion, back where it Yeah, belongs. you hold it like you're watching something scary on TV. Yeah, no, but it was just that uh, we were talking about cushions yeah. and but show, my addiction. Show, show the UFOs. Yeah, so we have been working... Uh, so in 2021, we were doing the Sound of Knitting concerts that we did in Trondheim with the Trondheim Solistina, uh, which is very fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we recorded videos and we've launched those, so you may know about it. If not, go check out the Sound of Knitting. It's quite cool. And we were on stage um, kind of leading the concerts, uh, these so-called knitting concerts with classical music. Um, and these are the, thi the, these are the mittens that we were knitting on stage. <laughs> not we've, finished. Well, this one's finished. We have one finished. One. And then we've got a smaller one here. Uh, and that... these are on our web shop, aren't they? They're, yeah. Because this is, this, what, this is what people were knitting while they were listening to the music. And yeah, they're we... on our web shop, but they're also part of the Sano Knitting yeah. uh, bundle that you get, if you get it. So, so we yeah, and here's, stories about here's another one. This one uh, is kind of sort of uh, done, but not really. It needs a thumb. And then we've got, um... oh, look at this. We've got another one from another concert. We did a few concerts. We have to find the yarn and finish. Yeah, the and we other have to one. finish them. So again, um, one of each, <laughs> one of each. Yeah. So and, and they're all, as you can see as well. And we have them in different sizes. They're, they're all in different sizes as well. So. Didn't we have give three sizes or did we get two yeah, sizes? Yeah, I think two or three sizes. You so. can easily change the size based on one pattern because you just change the needle. So yeah. it's easy. And I found the yarn. I think. Oh, and look here. Oh, but these are okay. So the wrist warmers. And those are thin. No. No. <laughs> so here you got a, 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 one of these. <laughs> Only one. Yeah. But that, the, the mitten is another one. Yeah. So these are actually, originally we designed these for the, viol for the people uh, who play the, the violin and the cellos and all that. Um, and, it, and the violas. And it was so that they could keep their hands warm while they were rehearsing or something. Um, it turns out that they need more of the flexibility of their hands. Yeah. So they don't really do that. But anyway, that was the idea originally when we so started they could match our collaboration like with what them. what people were knitting and, in the and look. audience. But that's another size. Yeah, another size. This is a small one. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to finish. We True. have to finish them, yes. Maybe we should book more concerts with uh, the Trondheim yeah, Solistina. Maybe to... we should go on tour to the USA and Canada and maybe to Actually, England. we talked about that. All these countries in Germany and Netherlands and then Japan, of course. A big, big tour. That would be so much fun, wouldn't it? We talked about it. Yeah, we did. But, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of talking. and uh, Wow. Well. Not... There's so much things happening. But, you know, organizing a tour with, say, 12 plus musicians plus the two of us, plus the people that need to be, you know, or everybody who is in the background that you don't really see, but who need to be there. That's very costly. Yeah. And um, it would be, you know, you would need to do it uh, in a way that is 
sustainable mm. um, somehow. And I don't know how that would be. I mean, it, it, you never know. But you could get the video and watch it as well if you want. Yeah. Uh, there's an hour of music and uh, it's really nice. So, and we also went to Selbu, to the museum mm -hmm. in Selbu. So we talked to this, this lady, Solvay, and she was telling the story about the Selbu mitten because this is also based on the the kind of the selbu mitten. It is a selbu mitten, tradition. actually. Yeah, it could be. Or a selbu mitten doesn't necessarily have to have the rose on it. It no. can be so many other things. Um, well, we used the acanthus because that was kind of something new. Well, we were in the acanthus we period. Were, we then. did a lot of the acanthus. Too. Back then in 2019, yeah. 2019, 2021, we were a lot there. And we've done a lot with that also for the Roman, for the layered yeah. color work, we did a lot. Hmm. But I did find the yarn over there, which we could yeah. use. This is another red, but... I love this red. Yeah. I love this red. This is uh, from Ask. Yeah, the boat uh, Ask. You should, maybe you should bring this on the cruise and you can make a new pair of these mittens. And it's got a great name as well. It's Bunderöd. Bunderöd, that's the red that... Farmer's people, red. Yeah, that people used on the barn. Yeah, so farmer's red. Because this, ladies and gentlemen, is the color of barns in Norway. Yeah. And then you add a little bit of the embellishment on the barns in this. Usually many barns, in this region anyway, they have a rose on the... Um, the Valdres rose. The Valdres rose on the... Up in on the... the, up in the, on, on, the um, on the side of the barn where the, where the roof goes like that. Open, Smack uh, in there. Murder. In the eaves, they have eaves. The, oh. the, the flower. Mm. And actually, somewhere I heard it... It's called the Valdres Rose, but it actually comes from Pennsylvania. Yeah, because this guy who brought it back to Valdres, he spent some time in America and mm. in Pennsylvania. And I think that tradition with this ornament on the barns came from there because yeah. the German immigrants, they put it on their barns. Yeah. I actually bought a book somewhere in New England a few years ago, and I still haven't found that book. But yeah, I know I, where, I know book. which book it is. Uh, yeah, a, very, a book about barns yes. in Philadelphia. 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 Yeah. No, Pensil no not Pen Philadelphia. Pensil Pennsylvania. 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 Yeah. So yeah, there is another fun fact. There's yeah. so many fun facts uh, to learn. But you should bring this on the next cruise and, and make I'm bringing this on the next another cruise. pair of this. I'm totally bringing this. And I have the blue and the white, so you can finish yeah. this one. And I want to do my rain uh, hat as well. And then I need to mm. quilt because there's going to be quilters there. Yeah. And so, this will be, this, we have to make another one and give it as a gift to someone with smaller hands. Yeah. So wow, Arne, look at us here in our kitchen and time flies, time flies. doesn't it? Yeah, and I think we should, maybe we should stop and do something else. Yeah, so or, I need to go and... <laughs> it's I, almost one hour. I need to go and look at that ladder and see what the hell you... I think you will love it. Brought into I, the I guess that's probably you say, oh, we shouldn't paint it oh because it looks beautiful as it is. I think that, yeah. that will happen. Yeah. So while I wait for my cushion to arrive, <laughs> I never thought of that, that I hoarded cushions. I think you do. You're just not aware of it. Because well, you think... You, I am now. Yeah, you think like, oh, that, this, this is not hoarding. This is something we need. Yeah. But then you... Kind of. My big Swedish uh, chest. Uh, that one is full of old Swedish cushions. And cushions that no longer are in use exactly yeah but when i get when we get the extension and i get my new room i will have a day bed in that room yeah but that's and a problem actually with some some of the cushions i buy they come with a cushion pad inside it and usually i don't like those cushion pads because i want you see this softer i want down feathers so that you can go oh like that right and those cushions <laughs> they're very hard and 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 they don't work no so I end up taking out the cushion pad and then I have to go out and buy another cushion to put or another pad to put inside. Yep. So that's that's what happens. So what happened next time? Next, uh, sit and knit for a bit on a Sunday. We have to pre-record. Yes. Ne well, we do pre-record all our sit and knit for a yeah, bit. This is not live. Episodes nowadays. Because we travel too yeah. much. So next time we are going to do a pre-recorded sit and knit for a bit, uh, probably after we return from my from visiting my parents in Sweden, where we are going next week. When we come back from that trip, we are going to record a new Sin in It for a bit. And then we're going on the cruise. And whilst we are on the cruise, I believe it's March 10th, mm -hmm. uh, the Sin in It for a bit that is aired then will be the one uh, that we recorded just before leaving. So we'll be a little bit out of tune 
with with time, um, and maybe we'll be posting from the cruise anyway, yeah. so that you can so that you can follow and then us. Then I think I will pull out all the stuff I have prepared for the cruise, so you can see what I have planned that we should do on the cruise. Yeah. You might be shocked when you see all the projects, but sometimes actually we had show and tell on the cruises and people are more shocked. Did you remember we had it once and people yeah. are more shocked when they see all the things I produce on the cruise because I constantly do something. Yeah. Remember, it's almost embarrassing when I show all the things. Yeah, it's like 12 things I and everybody else, so did, everybody else did everybody else did half of this. <laughs> that would be me. But I can't stop. It's yeah. kind of... You know, I fall asleep if I don't yeah. have anything in my fingers. Okay, now I'm going to go and think about the fact that I'm a cushion hoarder. I've you never about thought that. about it that way. You can go um. and count your cushions. <laughs> okay. So now I can't tease him about all the no, other things. And I can count my flatty collection. You only have one. One. <laughs> Yeah, but how many dolls do you have? I don't know. Yeah, correct. <laughs> that was the right answer. You don't know how many dolls you have. Too many if you ask no, me. No, 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 no. There can never be too many dolls. I'm you just love kidding. them. I, I just put, bring out the dolls and then you start com combing them. That's true. You yeah. do the hair. I do. I love... Not on this like, one though. No, she doesn't have hair. But on this one I could style a beautiful coat on her. Yeah. A beautiful knitted coat. So I'm very proud of that. Anyway, we hope that you have enjoyed this episode. And if you have, please give it a big yeah. And we're not angry up. at each other. We're just discussing. If someone yeah, we, we think, love teasing each other. If someone thinks other. we are angry. Because no, no, no. Oh, if I'm angry, you think I'm angry because of his hoarding. I'm not. I think it's funny. Yeah, I mean, we just love teasing each other. So anyway, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have, give it a big thumbs up. Look at that. Like you know, the she, flat, flat Yeah, is Flatsy is giving us a big thumbs up for the episode. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, if you are a subscriber, make sure to turn on the notification bell or notification bell as Arna calls it. The notification. The naughty bell. bell. The naughty and that bell. way you will never miss an episode. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, um, there's a lot of fun stuff here on our YouTube channel. So we would love it if you yeah. did become a subscriber. Uh, newsletter is a really great way to keep in touch with us. That's where we send out um, information about upcoming tours about new releases on our website and, and you know things like that and uh, if you do want more content uh, we have a members area uh, here on YouTube uh, where you can that you can join and all you need to do is go to the Arn and Carter's channel look for the subscribe button next to it you'll find a join button click on that select your tier and you're ready to go um, extra content is uh, weekly catch-ups with Arne and Carlos, the 15 minute with Arne and Carlos catch-ups. We've got live streams with Knitting Health. We've got shenanigans in the kitchen, which is something that we nowadays only do um, in the members channel mm -hmm. and a lot of other fun stuff like emojis and, and cool things like that. So do consider taking a look at it and see if it's something you want to do. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to know more about the mittens, go to the soundofknitting.com. Sound okay, so now I think it's and yeah. we're also going to put some links in the yeah. description down below. So thank you so much for watching. And we will see you again in 14 days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we can't wait to show you uh, new things. All and the things talk we have about, collected yeah, since last time. More cushions and more ladders probably. <laughs> and other furniture for rooms that don't exist. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Life here in uh, <laughs> Norway, <laughs> in Arne and Carlos' house is never boring. No, I, you know. Is never, never, never boring. boring. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you again very, very soon. Bye. Bye.